Neil Battaglia, saxstation.com. Here's a video with a fingering chart with the alto saxophone. And again, the fingerings for all the saxophone family are the same, but since it's a video, I can just play the alto saxophone and you can play along if you have an alto. I actually don't have a baritone saxophone, but the alto saxophone and the baritone saxophone are exactly an octave apart. So if I play a C on the alto, it's also going to be a C on the baritone, they'll just be in different octaves. So if you are playing the baritone saxophone and you're checking out my videos for the fingerings, I would listen to this video and the alto because it will be the most similar. It'll be in the same key as the baritone saxophone. Saxophones can either go up to a high F or a high F sharp using a high F sharp key. This saxophone doesn't have a high F sharp key. I can still play a high F sharp, I just can't use the key that sometimes is around here. Some saxophones, the more modern ones, tend to have that. Some of them don't. Uh, you might have it, you might not. All right, so these are the diagrams for the fingering chart from SaxStation. You can also get a printable version on SaxStation that's free by going to saxstation.com downloads. If you'd like to get this version with all the alternate fingerings, then you can get that by getting one of my classes or being part of Saxophone Tribe. All right, so saxophone technique by itself won't make you a great musician, but it definitely helps you play better and it won't get in the way if you have good technique. A quick note on fingering, you basically want to keep your fingers connected to the keys at all times whenever possible. There are a few situations where you can't, but most of the time you can. So you basically have that tip of the finger on the key when it's pressing, when it's lifting. Incorrect position would be to kind of have flying fingers and have a lot of space. That's less efficient and it's harder to play well by doing that. People still play well doing that, but it makes it more difficult. It's better to have good habits than bad habits. So this fingering chart is basically a lot of pages that has all of the alternate fingerings. And I'm also gonna play the notes on the alto, soprano, and tenor saxophones. So the diagrams are basically like you're looking at the horn in front of you. If you see keys on the right that are pressed, it's on the right of you, your right hand. If you see keys on the left pressed, you're using your left hand. Sometimes other charts use a different system, but this is the system I'm using because it makes sense to me. All right, so the chart goes from low B flat up to high F sharp. And sometimes notes have these different names. B flat and A sharp are the same. They sound the same anyway. I'll get into that in a second. So below the staff, we've got B flat up to D. The next five notes start at E flat, go up to G. After that, we've got G-sharp up to C, then C-sharp up to F, F-sharp up to B-flat, B up to E-flat, and then E up to F-sharp. Beyond that is altissimo, which is good to work on, but it's not going to be covered in this chart. So the saxophone has about two and a half octaves for its range. And all the saxophones have the same range by default. You can get into altissimo depending on really your skill level, not so much the instrument. All right, so these are labels for the different fingers on each hand. So P stands for pinky, so we got left pinky, we've got one, two, three for the middle fingers. We've got LH, that stands for the side of the left hand. We've got LT, that's the thumb of the left hand. And then on the right hand, we have the same system. So a dark key means it's pressed down. If it's white or empty, that means it's left unpressed. On the left hand, you've got three main keys. Those go with L1, L2, and L3. On the right hand, you've got three main keys. You've got R1, R2, and R3. But there are a lot more keys on the saxophone. There are usually either 22 keys or 23 keys, depending on whether you have a high F sharp key. The left hand palm keys are used when you keep your fingers on the main keys with your left hand. They're just not necessarily pressed. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And you use the side of your left hand. And I'm abbreviating that LH. The right hand also presses three different keys. Not necessarily at once, usually one at a time. With F sharp, there's an alternate key for the low and the middle F sharp, and there's sometimes a high F sharp key. 
that's a little bit more modern. If you have an older saxophone, you might not have it. If you have certain models of certain brands, they also might not have it. The left hand table keys are all pressed by the left pinky. On the modern saxophones, these tend to be more ergonomic. Sometimes there's a little bit more difficulty in going between them in the transitions on an older saxophone. For the E flat and C keys, you use the right pinky. So you either press one or the other or neither. The high F and the bis key, or sometimes called the front F, are pressed with the first finger on the left hand and the second finger. So the fingerings for all the saxophones are fundamentally the same. There are a few small differences, but not too much. There is generally a main fingering and some alternates. Usually the main fingering is more in tune. Sometimes two fingerings can be equally viable. So like the side B-flat and the bis key B-flat. Sometimes a person will use one more than the other or the other more. It depends on their preference. If you don't have a high F-sharp key, don't worry about it too much. You can play notes including the high F-sharp and above without it. You don't really need it, but it is convenient in some cases. So some notes can be written in different ways, but sound the same. So like A sharp sounds the same as B flat. You can even have double flats and double sharps. So I'm writing some of the enharmonic equivalents next to each other because like A flat is just as common as G sharp. Depends on what key you're in and what chord and everything. And I'm also writing some less common pitch equivalents below. So I'm saying that some alternate fingerings are more equal than others. So basically some will work better, be more in tune. Sometimes you just mostly want to use an alternate fingering when it's played quickly and you transition to another note and it won't be noticed as much that it doesn't sound quite as in tune or as good at the same time. And you usually want to use the main finger. You usually want to use the main fingering if you're going to sustain a note. The saxophones play with a treble clef, so the treble clef is implied for all the notes in this fingering chart. All right, the lowest note is called B flat or A sharp. There's just one option for it, and you might have difficulty playing this note when you first start. It is just the lowest note, so that's where we're starting. The next note is a low B. It has a similar fingering, you're just using a different table key. And it also could be seen as C flat. You'd use the same fingering for both versions of the note. After that, you have low C, which is sometimes written as low B sharp. And it doesn't use the left hand table keys. All the lower notes actually below middle D, you don't press the octave key. So that's the key you use with your left thumb. After C is C sharp, which is also written as D flat. So it's like the low C, but you're pressing one of the table keys with your left pinky. Then comes D, low D. You're using three fingers on the left hand, three fingers on the right hand. Then E flat or D sharp. It's like the low D, but you also press one key with your right pinky. Here's low E, which can be written as low F flat. Here's low F, which can be written as low E sharp. And for many of these notes, you just have one option. Then you have F sharp. There is an alternate fingering for this note. You generally want to use the normal fingering or the regular fingering, but the other fingering can be useful for some situations. Then you have G, 
And now we're starting to get into what I call the mid-range of the saxophone. The mid-range is usually what you want to start playing when you first start playing the saxophone. It's a little bit easier to play than the highest notes and the lowest notes. Then you have G-sharp, which is also known as A-flat, and you have a few different alternate fingerings for this note. I generally will use the one on the left, but you can usually use the ones on the right. On some older saxophones, you might not be able to use actually all of those alternates. Then you have A in the mid-range. We're still not pressing the octave key yet. Then you've got B flat, and there are actually three good fingerings for B flat. The side B flat, the bis key, and the fork B flat. And you've got a couple more alternate fork B flat fingerings. I tend to use the side B flat. Some people tend to use the bis B flat more often. Then you've got middle B. This is one of the easier notes to play on the saxophone. Then middle C. In music theory, this sometimes is the note Do. So thinking about the note is sometimes easier. The key of C major doesn't have any flats or sharps. But it's not actually the easiest note to play on saxophone. It's not that hard, but it's a little bit harder than a few other notes. There is an alternate fingering for the C. But you generally want to use the fingering on the left side. Then you have C-sharp, so this actually involves none of the keys being pressed down. You still want to keep your fingers on the keys, you just don't want to have them pressed down. You can do that on the saxophone, unlike a clarinet, which has open holes. Then you have D, middle D. This is the first note that uses the octave key. So it's like the D an octave below, it just also has the octave key. And that's actually a pretty convenient feature of the saxophone, this octave key. You basically use the same fingerings as you did the octave below, but you also add on the octave key. E flat is like the E flat an octave below with the addition of the octave key. And it's also known as D sharp. Then you've got E with the octave key. After that, you have F with the octave key. Then F sharp with the octave key, which again has the same sort of alternate fingering, it just also has the octave key. Then you've got G with the octave key. After that you have G sharp with the octave key, which again has a few different alternate fingerings. And G sharp is also known as A flat. Then you've got A with the octave key. After that comes B flat with the octave key. Again, with a few different options that work pretty well. Then you've got B with the octave key. And if you're just starting to play, these are gonna maybe start to be a little bit harder than the notes that came earlier in the chart. But if you have been playing a while, you should be able to handle these notes. Then you've got C with the octave key. And again, it has a similar alternate fingering. Then you've got C sharp with the octave key. So it's no keys pressed except for the octave key. Then you've got high D. You're going to start to use the palm keys. So it's the first palm key and the octave key. You use the side of your left hand to press the palm keys. Then you have the E flat with the palm keys. So these notes use the octave key, but they're not like the same fingering of the same name of the notes below. 
Then you've got high E, which uses the palm keys and also the side of the hand for the right hand. There is an alternate fingering, which uses the front F key. Then you've got high F, which is the highest note you'll play easily if you don't have a high F sharp key and a high F key. You could stop here if you want to, if you're in the beginning stages of playing the saxophone. Here's high F sharp. Some saxophones do have this special high F sharp key and you can use this other alternate fingering on the right side. And actually, even if you don't have the front F key, you can play this note without it. I'd like to thank Brett Pimentel for creating the software that helped make this possible. And thanks to Erica Height for using her hands in the pictures earlier. You can go to saxstation.com to get a printable one-page fingering chart. Check out the classes and the posts, the other videos. I started Sax Station back in 2006. There's a lot of things there. There's a lot of comments from other people as well. Oh.